In this video, I'll be focusing on the Criterion Age Gen 1 portion of my Design ePortfolio report that managed to score me a 7 out of 7. So the first piece of information that you have to know that IB gives you are the unit title, key concept, related concept, global context, and statement of inquiry. So these pieces of information change every year, but this is what they were when I did my design e portfolio. They were focusing on the idea of culture through personal and cultural expression as the global context. And another thing that you always have to look at is the rubrics, the criteria through which IB will grade you. And of course, we always want to focus on level seven to eight. But in this video, I'll just be focusing on strand one. So if you were to look at strand one, it focuses on explaining and justifying why we need the product. When we think of why we need the product, we think of the fact that there has to be an issue. So the first thing for design is that you always have to identify what the issue is. But the problem is that IB doesn't explicitly mention to you what the issue is. So you'll have to sort of infer it on your own based off the pieces of information that IB gives you, in which the main thing that you can actually look at is the statement of inquiry. So if you were to read this, it says sharing aspects of culture can enhance international mindedness. So when you look at it this way, you can sort of see that enhancing international mindedness can sort of be the issue, like what you focus on. And sharing aspects of culture can be considered the solution. If you look at it this way, it makes it easier to expand on it a bit more. So from this, we can sort of say the lack of international mindedness can be the issue, the problem. So this is not that specific, but we can just keep it at this for now. And we can actually just start the report based on it. So how I start my report is I start by defining international mindedness. It's always good to define any keywords that are not general words, especially terms like this. There's not really a there is a fixed definition, but what they're looking for is more towards what you think of that term itself, because it's also a bit subjective. So if you can expand on that definition more, it would be better because instead of just taking some definition you find online. And another thing is if you were to ever take something online or rephrase something, always include in-text citations. These are very important, especially throughout the Criterion A section because referencing citations, all of this is part of an important criteria in Criterion A, so it'll help you boost your score. So this entire paragraph is just a definition really. And if we were to look at this, the problem that has hindered this idea by idea, I refer to international mindedness. Since past civilizations is cultural imperialism. So this is where I start to narrow down the issue a bit. So I first I'd identify that the lack of international mindedness is the main idea. So I wonder, okay, why does it happen? And after doing some research, I see, okay, one of the main issues was cultural imperialism. So this becomes sort of my focus after doing some research. And I just expand on that idea. In which this entire thing shows preliminary research before I actually decide on my product and my solution. So this entire paragraph focuses mainly on the history of cultural imperialism which is in the past. And this paragraph, as you can see, focuses on the 20th century, which is in present times. So one important thing that you can show is how the issue evolved over time. And just to keep in mind, it should sort of be a long-standing issue. Shouldn't be something that just started a year ago or so, or else there won't be much to show progress of. So if we actually were to look at this, 
go back to the criteria, we can see we've already presented what the problem is, cultural imperialism. The main problem is lack of international mindedness, but I choose to zoom in a bit more to cultural imperialism and why this problem occurs. So I sort of saw the history of how the problem was before and how it's evolved to what the problem is today in today's time. And one important thing to also keep track of is the usage of evidence. You have to prove that the problem is actually there. Usually data and statistics are the easiest way to do that. So you can see here and generally just throughout here, there's a lot of pieces of information that show the effect of cultural imperialism today through statistics to prove it. So proof through And as mentioned, statistics are normally the easiest way to show the proof. This paragraph is also evidence technically, but it focuses more on an expert point of view through Ian Hill. So it shows his perspective, his opinion on the fact that that lack of international mindedness and how it's also present in today's time. So we see it through his lens, which shows more weight behind the fact that the issue exists. So this sort of also shows primary and secondary data. It's not really necessary in Shan one, but it's good to have expert opinion along with any secondary research through articles or whatever that you find online, because it makes your issue and your proof more credible. If you were to look at back here, okay, present what the problem is, we've done that already. Why this problem occurs, we've shown it how it evolved over the past, and we show why the problem is what it is today. And we've also presented proof of the problem through secondary research and primary research, so mostly through expert idea. And then we move on. So this entire paragraph is more towards connecting the issue to things like the global context, key concept, related concepts, statement inquiry. The thing with I MYP is that they really like to put a lot of emphasis on these concepts and these ideas, whereas in DP, it's not really like that, but how it is in MYP. So you'll have to be able to show connection to your issue, lack of international mindedness to all these points. So as you can see, for me, just to make it clearer, what I did was I bolded all of these points. You can see personal and cultural expression is the global context. Perspective is the related concept. Communication, key concept. And sharing aspects of culture, enhancing international mindedness. These are all part of the statement of inquiry. So I use these ideas to just strengthen the idea of why the why international minus is an issue itself. And this also connects back to this, uh, this point, why this problem occurs. So you have to connect this point to a key concept, related concept, global context, and statement of inquiry. And as you do this automatically, you'll be connecting unit title as well. Another thing, if you can look at this, you can see, for example, I put an example sort of evidence. So it's good to include evidence whenever possible. And remember to always include in-text citations whenever you take anything from any sort of source that's not your brain or not common sense. And now we're moving on to the solution, the product that you create. So if we were to look at back to the statement of inquiry again, sharing aspects of culture should be 
one aspect you focus on when you want to think of your product, which is like the solution to the issue. So your main focus should be creating a product that is able to share some aspect of some culture. They say culture here, but you should be looking at a specific culture. And the main purpose of that product is enhancing international mindedness. And the way you are able to enhance that international mindedness is what's supposed to make your product special. And while you think of your product, you should also be thinking of things like identity culture, different perspectives, expression of culture. You should be thinking of all that when you decide the features that you want your solution, your product to have. So in this paragraph, you can discuss what your solution is. Generally, the features of the solution and how does it help when we think from the perspective of the issue, which is lack of international mindedness. So my solution was a cultural artifact, specifically a good luck ornament prevalent in Japanese culture. So the culture I chose to, I chose was Japanese culture. So you choose a specific culture. And there uses the Japanese art of paper folding, 3D origami, a Japanese good luck ornament, symbolize part of Japanese culture. So what I what how I did, went about this is I want to express Japanese culture as much as possible. So I tried to include features in my product that was able to make this culture as prevalent as possible. And then purpose for communicating aspects of Japanese culture. So if you were to see certain keywords that I also use throughout shows connection to, for example, state of inquiry, sharing aspects of culture, and the term communication itself is connecting to the key concept. So these words in your key concept, related concept, global context, and every all of that will actually help you in forming formulating the way you write your answer because the more these keywords are shown, the more you know that you'll stay in track because the moment you go out of track from that important point, you'll be discussing about something that is not relevant anymore. And of course, you have to go back to the main issue in a national mindedness. So I show, I just put a short sentence on how this issue promotes international mindedness because that's the main thing you have to focus on. One problem that people in my cohort had was that they were able to show the culture. They were able to have all the features that showed whatever culture they wanted to focus on, but they kept on leaving, going out of the focus of international mindedness. They weren't able to justify how this product actually promoted international mindedness because the moment you go away from that, you're, you're already going away from your issue and that's not a good thing. So you'll have to keep it in your head that you always focus on the issue at hand. So motivating my target audience, this being Japanese culture, this is how I chose to show that this is how my product promoted international mindedness. So this is about the product itself. So if you were to look at it, how your product would help, this is also shown. But just because we did all this doesn't mean we're done. When you think of how your product would help, you would think that it depends on the target audience as well because to different people some things may be helpful some things may not be helpful so when you think of help you also have to think of who do you want to help in which you have to also mention who your target audience is so when you mention your target audience you mention who is, who's your target audience you mentioned why is the solution necessary for your target audience. And you also mentioned any other benefits that your product can have on your target audience. So my target audience are members of the school community. Usually you'll be given a few options of target audience to choose from. It's not up to you. You'll be given options and you choose from one of them. And then you expand based off of that target audience itself. Here I explain why 
international minus itself is necessary for my target audience, which also shows why my product is necessary. And these three points to show any extra benefits. This really depends on totally on what your product is, but you can take a look at my answer and see how I formulated the answer. And one another thing that I included was why my target audience choice is appropriate because I mentioned that they give you a few options of a target audience. You don't just simply choose one. You choose one that's most appropriate for the issue and your product itself. And how I chose to go about this was I use expert opinion. So you can see I conducted an interview with an IBM might be individuals and societies teacher in which it's usually stuff like this is more connected to individuals and society as a subject as well. A lot of stuff in design. So I chose to use my individuals and societies teacher to get their opinion. And I showed a screenshot as proof and explained based off of this feedback on how my, on how, first of all, my the, the target audience is appropriate for this problem itself and why my product would be able to aim towards my target audience and actually impact them. Let's just do an interview. And as you can see throughout, I try to include expert opinion whenever I find it, whenever, I, whenever it's possible, because it really makes whatever you say much more credible. And yeah, that's all I included for my for strand one of my criterion A report. As you can see, we've managed to cover all the main points, which would be able to score you a seven for the strand of criterion A. Thank you for watching.